from the Roots worship resources for today, they give a thought for the week entitled Fake News. That whether it's climate change, life-changing diets, or dealing with the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic, we are surrounded by experts who speak authoritatively on their given subject. This is often followed, especially in the news media, by another expert speaking authoritatively in the same subject, but often with a completely different view. On social media, it can be even worse. Often you have no idea whether the person speaking authoritatively is an expert or not. But you can probably guarantee that there will be a lot of people shouting at each other. Well, this doesn't look like it's going to be changing anytime soon, but it can leave us longing for genuine authority. This was why Jesus' teaching received the reaction that it did. He not only spoke with certainty and confidence, but he backed up his teaching with actions that confirmed his authenticity and authority. He really did hold power. In the Gospel story, an unclean spirit looked to heckle him, but was firmly rebuked and sent packing. As Christians, we recognise God's authority. And we look to both the words and actions of Jesus to reveal it. If someone claims to have authority today, we are right to ask, do their actions match their words? And what is the fruit of those words? Well, many of you in church will have heard me speak before of the time when my belief and faith was really shot and having got permission to no longer be in a church appointment serving as a minister, I was on the brink of resigning as a minister and leaving the church completely. But it was the authenticity and the wholeness of living that I read in the gospel stories about Jesus that still had a grip on me. That fullness and way of living in the world that I saw in the Gospel stories was something that I couldn't just walk away from. And I still recognise that the way of Jesus is liberating and fills me and fills us with love and peace in the deepest parts of our being, of our personality, of who we are. In Jesus, we see the life of God that meets us where we are, just as we are, and that sets us free. That setting free is often something that we need to seek again and again. But the more we seek to live the way of God and seek to know God's presence, the more constant and more authentic, I believe, we become growing in that likeness of Jesus. As his disciples, people seeking to follow him and embrace his way of being. Let us pray. Of God, when Jesus spoke in the synagogue, everyone was astonished by the absolute authority of his words and presence. In today's world, it is so easy to be taken in by someone's words or their favourable commanding presence. We think perhaps of people in the media, on the music scene and social networks. But unfortunately, not everyone's words have integrity or match their actions. Oh God, help us to discern who to give credence to. Forgive us when our own words or actions don't marry with our calling. 
Help us to speak and act with integrity at all times. Help us also not to jump to conclusions by first impressions or preconceptions or prejudices. Anything that turns us against people who don't quite fit our expectations of them. You may wish to speak through them to us. Forgive us for judging. Help us to seek your wisdom, to see and hear you in all people, regardless of age, appearance or background, with the same compassion and graciousness that we see in Jesus. For in his name we pray. Amen. Pray now for others. God of our impressionable world, we pray for the leaders of the nations, that they would be wise, just and compassionate as they exercise their authority. We remember especially those in power in Russia and those protesting at the imprisonment of Alexei Navalny. We remember the government in the Netherlands, in the United States and here in the UK, praying for all leaders as they discern the way forward amid the social and economic challenges of the pandemic. We pray for the people of Hong Kong and their uncertain future. We pray that your truth may be known and that your love be shared in Christ's name. We pray for a smooth and just rolling out of vaccine programs, for those who are vulnerable, for those who mistrust the vaccine, for those for whom it has come too late. We pray for the families and friends of, and all ministering to the dying and the bereaved. May your truth be known, and your love be shared in Jesus' name. We pray for those who feel overwhelmed by the additional pressures of homeschooling, for those whose relationships are at breaking point, we pray for those who have lost their lives to depression and for their families and friends. We pray too for those whose lives are blighted by anxiety and stress. We pray for the health services and charities trying to support them. May your truth be known and your love be shared in Jesus' name. We pray for your church, around the world and in our own community. We pray for creative ways to serve and to share, for courage and integrity as we listen and pray, for urgency and daring as we respond to the needs around us. May your truth be known and your love be shared in Jesus' name. We pray in a moment of silence for all those on our hearts and for all those who have no one to name them in prayer. May your truth be known and your love be shared in Jesus' name. Amen. The Roots resources suggested 
a video um, of part of a sermon by Dr. S. Lockridge that was preached in the 1970s. Um, and I've asked that both of the links be included here. The first link is the longer version and includes a lot of vid video footage from films of Jesus' life to accompany his words. The second version is shorter uh, and suggested for young people. There is more limited video footage in the second version. But I encourage you, if you're able, to watch the longer one. And through the words, and through the passion, and the commitment and dedication that comes through, to allow yourselves to think, to feel, to know who Jesus is to you. Just as I wanted to leave the church and was itching to, to leave, the person of Jesus continued to compel me. And so as you listen, I want you to perhaps consider that question that Dr. Lockridge poses. The question, the rhetorical question maybe, I wonder if you know him. And I ask you just to watch it, to be drawn by the video. You may not agree with it all, but at the end, reflect on your response. Not to the video and how it is done, but to the Jesus that you know or long to know more. After the video, we finish with the hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. And now I ask that the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, will be with you now and evermore. Dr Lockridge's words.